It's Madden NFL 22, and we've got a showdown in the NFC West. It's the Hawks and the Rams, and it comes your way next. It's the National Football League, presented by EA Sports. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gaughan alongside my good friend Charles Davis. And Charles, so often it's the quarterbacks that are in the spotlight, and in this game, no different. We have a very compelling matchup. Russell Wilson of the Seahawks, Matthew Stafford of the Rams. And I think that each quarterback wants to play this game with a faster tempo. They want to get the plays in quickly, get in and out of the huddle quickly, take just a few seconds at the line of scrimmage and survey the defense, and then attack. And I think that we'll see both offenses try to do that in this one. And we are underway from SoFi Stadium. This taken in at the goal line. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Quarterback Matthew Stafford bringing out the L.A. offense. And Stafford, of course, all those years in Detroit and now in his first season with Los Angeles. And what big news it was back in January when news leaked out that Matthew Stafford was leaving Detroit and heading out west to join the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams are hoping he's the missing piece to the puzzle as they seek a Super Bowl title. Over 45,000 yards passing as a Lion, but not a single playoff victory in his entire tenure. The Rams general manager has said he can envision Stafford staying five to eight years, which would take him into his 40s. Here's second and 10. First carry now for the Memphis man, Daryl Henderson. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Now a play fake it at Stafford. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And for the first time, we get a look at the veteran Russell Wilson as he gets set to lead yet again the Seattle Seahawks offense. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. That's complete to DK Metcalf. You don't want no problem. You don't want no problem from me. Oh, 
working with a second and four. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And he'll get this one up to the 26. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through. And has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. Third and two, now Wilson. Well, the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On first down, it's Carson. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. Second down and eight. Now Wilson. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Wilson now to throw on third down. It's caught. Lock it. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get ten here. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. From the gun, it's Wilson. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Chances are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. There's Wilson to throw. He's going to let this go for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Oh, he left that one in a bad spot, but fortunately it's just an incompletion and not picked to bring up fourth down. Myers' kick is good. And the Seahawks grab a 3 0 lead. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes.
Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Let's go. Come on, let's go. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. play action. Here's Stafford. Going up top for Cup. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. He was looking for Cooper Cup there. And that'll bring up second down. Had the right idea there. Trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Second and ten. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And his pass incomplete. Good coverage on the outside, and I think that's where he wanted to check that down to. But once he saw the danger over there, he just threw that one over everyone's head. Smart play. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. From the gun, here's Stafford. And he spots Henderson open left side. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily go. going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever up at the 29 now they'll head to the line second and a yard Wilson he's going to look to run with it and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38 yard line that will go for nine yards and a first down on the keeper well he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane and he keeps it himself there worked out well and how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. They'll run on first down. Carson breaks through the contact. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They'll go option to the short side. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 14 yards that time, and a first down on the keeper. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that, and here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game, and all that preparation, it goes right out the window. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 38. On the option, a handoff to Carson. 
And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. You got him. Ha ha, you got him. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Seahawk football here to start quarter number two. A good position to be in here, second and inches. They go back to Carson here on second. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. And the Seahawks on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Here's Carson. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Now flags, and we're going to get a delay of game. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Now Wilson. Flush to his right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble. And it's second down. He was able to get away earlier in the drive, but apparently all the time they put in practice finally came to the front, didn't it? They remembered their lessons and found a way to contain him when he took off on that one. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. Over the middle, that's caught by Metcalf. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Now it's Carson. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They snap it at one. Now Wilson. And it's caught. Touchdown, Seahawks. Will Disley, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Jason Myers now for the extra point. He 
It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. To the touchdown here's Myers to boot it away no return here for Calais and this will be a touchback and the LA offense ready for this next possession they've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now Out of the gun, Stafford. And that's caught left side, it's Woods. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Three yards the gain there, second down. draw this is Henderson and give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34 play action Stafford the hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The defense surrenders a 13-yard pass play there on third and one. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford. But he's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. Deshaun Jackson is now with his fourth franchise in his 14th NFL season. But this one, a homecoming a little bit. He grew up in Long Beach, so playing for the Rams seems like a natural. Picks up a first down with that catch there. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. Oh, what a grab by Woods. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And that's a first down for the Rams after the catch there by Robert Woods. And he's coming up with back-to-back 90-catch seasons. I've always admired his game. Throw it to him hand it to him he blocks downfield a complete receiver that doesn't get the credit he deserves this will be the first red zone opportunity now for the rams they come up first and 10 at the 16. again at stafford this is caught and he couldn't quite get there tackled down at the one back-to-back -back receptions for him and it's another first down You 
And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0, our score. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Throwing a Stafford. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. The Seattle defense, they haven't broken yet. Coming up here on a third and goal situation. Back to throw, Stafford. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Robert Woods on the touchdown throw from Matthew Stafford. And the Rams have got this back to a one-score game. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. Reed going to bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And they had to go the length of the field last time out to get into the end zone. And with this starting field position, they're going to have to pretty much do it again. And I think the thought process going into it is, hey, if you have to be methodical, go ahead and do that. But what you really want are a couple of big plays. Eat up chunks of yardage and cut down the number of times you have to snap the football. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And that's caught inside the 35. And he takes it all the way down to the 32. You normally talk about the mobility and the accuracy first, but the arm strength, that's what can turn Russ into danger, Russ. And what was amazing to me was the fact he was able to get as much on the ball as he did because he was on the run. Normally, when you're on the move like that, you don't expect the ball to go that far. You would think you need your lower body to be involved. That was an all-arm throw. Yeah, and that throw on, traveling in even go. 64 yards in the air. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Under pressure, and he'll go down back at the 26-yard line. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half.
after the sack. It's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Another try after the first down sack. Wilson, and this will go to Carson out wide. A gain of four on the play, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Dancing to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. And Myers able to knock it through. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13 7. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And with only four seconds on the clock, time likely for just one snap of the football. He's going to let this go deep for Jackson. And this one too low. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front as we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We saw a strong first half out of quarterback Russell Wilson. First up, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Seahawks in that first half. And they've had some success on the ground. And with the lead going into the second half, they'll no doubt be looking to keep it going. Meanwhile, for the Rams, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football, and they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. Reed going to bring it out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The Bucs ready to go here to begin the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Nice throw. Big man catches the football for a first down, and that big man... That's D.K. Metcalf, the ninth receiver taken in the 2019 draft class 
I think if we redid it, he might very well be the first one off the board. 83 catches for 1,300 yards last year. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Second down and seven. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And his throw is incomplete. Chris Carson, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing into coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Again, Wilson. He's going to float this one deep right side. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again here, Robert Woods marches back onto the field. Sort of a slow and steady game so far, but reliable for him here in this third quarter. Sounds like we're describing a possession receiver, right? The one that finds a way to make the big catches, the ones that break the backs of defenses, keep first downs accumulating. I think he's that and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, he's been pretty good so far. We'll see if he can make this good game a great game. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. And a good grab there by Cooper Cup. Picks up a first down for the Rams and Cup's gone over the 90 reception mark each of the last two years. One of the best route runners, one of the most precise route runners in the NFL. He's really going to help his new quarterback, Matthew Stafford. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Now a play fake it at Stafford. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. It was Trey Flowers that time who got a hand in and broke it up. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes. You can read his hands. And you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Stafford. Got a man open. It's Tyler Higby. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Rams, they are on the move. They've got another first down. And Tyler Higby just keeps getting better and better as a receiver. Makes a nice grab there for a first down. In his sixth season now, all with the Rams, 6'6", 255. And we saw Matthew Stafford like working with TJ Hawkinson the last couple of years. He's going to love working with Tyler Higby. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Second down and three. Again, it's Henderson. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Hey, 
Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. Henderson will try and run for the first. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Stafford. Going up top for Cup. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Cooper Cup was his intended target, but it's going to be second down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team that's playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. Throwing again on second and ten. Stafford, again he targets Cup, and this time he's got it. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Five yards, now it's third and five. Stafford now to throw. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds. And now fourth down. And Gay knocks this one through. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. After the made field goal, Gay back out there to kick it off. Reed going to bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. Second down and five. They run it with Carson. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 42 yards rushing for him now to this point. First go. downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Whoa. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. This is Carson. Oh, good move. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Jordan Fuller there to take him down. Go, 
coming up on a second and six. Wilson will hand to Carson on the option. Carson the first down and more. And he gets it across the 50 and down to the 48. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. And we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slow with that front seven reacting to the football. Almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down. And they're really starting to take over in this game. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Wilson. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. The perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack. 13 and a half sacks in 2020, which tied for second in the NFL behind T.J. Watt of Pittsburgh. We're getting to that territory where we're starting to take this man for granted. Defensive player of the year, three out of the last four seasons in the NFL. A hole to dig out of here, second and 17. Another try after the first down sack. Wilson flushed out right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third down and 12. And there's the rookie from Western Michigan, Dwayne Eskridge. And a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. L.A. set to take over again on offense. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. First down, Stafford here. Open man is Higby, the tight end. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27th. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Here's Stafford. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby, and it's third and short. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. The Rams on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time it's third and three. That's taken in by Henderson. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. The key to any screen play is all in the deception, and that means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. And 
Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And yeah, the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. From the shotgun, Wilson. Out left, he's got it to Everett. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Second and four. Now a give right side. It's Carson. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he's going to be out of bounds but not before he takes it inside the 40. 86 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, for Chris Carson, I mean, he is a powerfully built back and using that size and strength there to good advantage as he shakes free of a would-be tackler. Yeah, in this part of the game, the fourth quarter, this is where a running back really has a chance to shine. This is what they've been training for to take over the game down the stretch. The defense, it's been battered all game long. And here, this is just a case of a runner imposing his will and deciding he didn't want to be tackled right there. Wilson, after the play fake to Carson, sliding out of the pocket. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And the Seahawks on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. Now it's Wilson. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And their defense was able to hold serve, albeit with a little help from that missed field goal as they settle in now first and ten. 
Maybe an important fourth quarter miss as this stays a three-point game. Yeah, now overtime is very much in the equation here. Just what you mentioned, a three-point game. They get a drive, put it through the post. We could have some free football, couldn't we? And a six-yard game gets them right around the 43. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Looking to throw again on second down. Stafford. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Woods, the intended receiver, and that takes us from second to third down. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. From the gun on third down, Stanford. And that is incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He's been terrific so far. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well Let's into go. the end zone for a touchback. Yeah, we will get another look at Seattle's offense. A little less than four minutes remaining. And the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them yeet up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. On second down now, it's Carson. 96 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Here's Wilson. And that is incomplete. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. So now Stafford and the Rams 
Down 13-10. Just over a minute, 40 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Stafford. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of 35. And this is obviously a spot where you lean on your stars. Get the ball to them in open space and let them do what they do. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now it's Stafford. He'll let this go for the end zone. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Deshaun Jackson, 45 yards. And the Rams on just two plays have taken the lead. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but not. you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. Here's Reed returning. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Clock running, and the Seahawks, they're running too, trying to speed up to the line of scrimmage. Wilson to throw. That's complete to Eskridge. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 27 yards there, first down. Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency? So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now Wilson. Steps away to his left. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Throwing now is Wilson. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. That time trying to find Gerald Everett. That'll bring up second down. So he's unable to complete it there. And just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Over the middle, that's caught by Metcalf. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. 
As they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. He's back to throw. Now he's got it. And now with six seconds remaining, they're going to burn their final timeout. Second and goal from the one. They'll look to throw. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. So for those of little faith, guess what? It got done. They now have the lead with that touchdown this late in the contest. I wonder if that was a play they were holding or a play that they just knew would work from past experience. Well, I just saw it in their eyes on the sideline before starting that last drive, and they did. You're right. They got it done. Looks like they're going to be the winners. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive, and it all culminates with a Seattle score. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Takes it at the seven. Let's go, baby. Well, this one, partner, was fun down to the very end. They got the points late, right before the whistle. Then the ensuing kickoff. They were hoping for magic on the other side, but couldn't get that spark. Fun if you won. <laughs> and fun for us, because we got to watch it and call it. That magic that you were talking about didn't occur at the end, but what a game all the way through.